So hi, I'm Dennis. I'm a data engineer at uh, Drizzly. And just kind of wanted to go over how uh, Drizzly's kind of adopted Dagster and tried to make this something that works for our entire team. Oops, and there we go. Okay, so the Drizzly data team is pretty similar to, I think, most data teams. We're kind of a collection of analysts, data scientists, and data engineers who kind of all have very different needs out of our data stack. Um, and really what brought us to Dagster was just the idea that like every everyone can kind of get something different from Dagster and there's just a lot of universal appeal. So when we kind of started rebuilding our data infrastructure about two years or a year and a half ago, we tried to build it along this line of like of shared spaces. We didn't really want anyone's workflow to be, to feel very different from anyone else's. We didn't want uh, a data scientist to feel like what they do is very different from an analyst. And we didn't want data silos to emerge of, it's a very different workflow for someone on marketing versus someone on strategic partnerships. So when we're doing, creating our shared spaces, we wanted things to follow the same workflows, be able to leverage the work of the entire team and um, allow members to be able to push changes without having to worry about any infrastructure and just be able to iterate quickly. So we started this by um, building out shared spaces around the SQL um, world. So this is, I think, pretty common at this point of just using a combination of DBT and Snowflake. Uh, between the two, we really had the flexibility to be able to uh, configure warehouses or um, databases to specific teams. Um, we could also just hold all of our logic in one place with DBT. And then it really just never felt that different if you were building a, a data science SQL model or a, a model that would be going into our, our visualization layer for marketing or something else. So that worked really well. What was a harder question was how we were going to build out a shared space for non-SQL workflows, because here the differences and needs kind of become a lot more apparent. So this is where we've kind of been hoping Dagster can fill that role and what we've been moving forward with Dagster. So for people who've been using Dagster for a while, um, you're probably familiar with a lot of these abstractions of just the differences between solids and pipelines and modes and presets. Um, but the main thing with this is just that kind of going back to Dagster appeals to different roles for different reasons. Um, we really didn't want it to be a barrier that in order to contribute to the Dagster project, you really needed to know every one of these abstraction layers. Um, so if you're an analyst just wanting to get a pipeline off the ground, you really shouldn't have to worry about the different workspaces and you shouldn't really have to worry about configuring your own resources because you should be just leveraging resources we've already used of already having defined our Snowflake or DBT resources. So when we thought of how we should uh, configure these environments to kind of work for everyone and be consistent across roles. We started by thinking how we should use modes within Dagster. So we divided these up into local, dev, and prod. Um, local mode is every resource is mocked. Um, this usage is for kind of quick local development and unit testing of pipelines. So as an example, instead of actually uh, pinging Snowflake, this could just be uh, some files saved that just mimic what the results of a Snowflake query would be. Um, our dev mode can be mocked or non-production versions of a system. So this could be for sticking with that Snowflake um, example, this could be something like pinging a staging table with a limit on the query. And this, again, is more just for integration testing and maybe um, confirming the, the schema that we're using. And then prod is for production systems. So <clears throat> how we kind of wrap all this together is our different deployments of Dagster. And we have four different deployments. Um, we have local, which is just running Dagster from within a virtual environment. 
And this is specific to one workspace. And this is for just, again, quickly getting your pipeline to, um, to be able to compile and be able to just like check it. Um, we have a Dagster Compose setup, which again is just for uh, your local machine, but this um, starts to bring in more of the Dagster dependencies such as the Postgres uh, database, the daemon, uh, we're working with on uh, creating a broker. And so this is for just kind of more involved testing. So you can get that, uh, see that every aspect of your pipeline is working correctly. Then after this, we start to actually like push um, code into Git and based on the branch you're going to, you can, it will be deployed either to our dev environment, which is just our AWS stack on our dev account or prod, which is just the same stack, but just on our prod AWS account. Um, the other thing we do to kind of limit some of the um, confusion over this, the different deployments are we do filtering across um, our different deployments. So we do filtering on pipelines, modes, presets, and schedules. And this is just to make it easy to know what all you should have available to you within a specific de uh, deployment. We just handle all this with um, environment variables, but this just makes it so that if you're running Dagster locally, you don't accidentally trigger a, pr a production run or you don't accidentally um, try and run something on dev when you don't really have the resources to um, run it in that environment. So our local deployment just look, is very much just running Dagit against a specific repo. Um, at this point, the only, as I've mentioned, the only modes you have available are local and the Dagster configuration is none because there's no um, additional uh, dependencies. So this is kind of what the instance looks like. Um, and then in object filtering, you just have access to local um, local mode and, and presets, and you don't have uh, uh, any of the schedules available. Moving up to our Docker environment, um, this is when it starts to, we really start to take advantage of just the flexibility of Dagster and being able to run different Dagster instances and in different deployments. So here we can use pretty much what we're going to be using in production, except uh, we can use like the Docker launcher instead of um, a custom like ECS launcher that we'd use in AWS. And this again is just allows us to keep moving our code along and get closer and closer to what it would look like in actual production without actually having to get to that step quite yet. Um, so here the instance is different because we um, have a different workspace where we have multiple um, repositories now. We have the BI repository and the data science repository, which is broken in this screenshot and I think is going to be broken in my demo. Um, and then you can see that the, uh, the Dagster daemon is running in this environment. And for object filtering, you now have access to both local and dev for presets and modes and now have schedules present. So our dev environment, our dev deployment is just, um, again, this is what we're starting to uh, get to what it will look like in production. So this is just Dagster running on AWS resources. Um, so we are just kind of built our own stack around ECS. We don't use EKS for um, our deployment of Dagster, but this is pretty much Again, it looks pretty similar to Docker Compose, but again, we're just using AWS resources at this point. And then our production stack is the exact same stack, but just on a different account. So one thing that's kind of holding this all together are our data scientists have put together some very nice cookie cutter templates. And this allows us to just very easily spin up um, new pipelines that adhere to our deployments. So this again, just makes it easier for people to be able to quickly get a pipeline off the ground and not have to worry about just all the, all the infrastructure in the back. You can just focus on the logic of your pipeline, which just makes this easier to get set up and running. So quick demo. Um, and just kind of, this will be pretty similar to um, 
the slides, but we can just go through a pipeline that um, I've been working on with an analyst recently. Should have started this before the presentation, but that's hindsight. There it is. Okay, so this inventory cost analysis or cost pipeline is just an integration pipeline where um, we read in a day's worth of S3 files, do some mapping to determine which files we actually need to bring in and then dynamically generate a Snowflake copy statement to load in that day's files. So at this point, um, the resources being used are Snowflake and S3, but since we're in local mode, this will all just be mocked. So we can run this pipeline. Um, it will run, but it won't actually be doing much just because the S3, it's not connected to S3. So this is just pretty much to um, make sure that our pipeline compiles and we can see it um, in the Dagster UI. And then also that we can write unit tests. So we can write unit tests still that um, ensure that that mapping is running correctly. But if we also, instead of, oops. So we can also run the same pipeline in our Docker Compose setup. And so I'll just reload the BI workflow. Okay. So now, so yeah, here we have uh, access to dev and local. Um, so we can run this with dev. And this time it's actually going to be hitting our um, dev S3 bucket. And you can see this is still kind of a work in progress, but we're actually did hit the um, dev S3 bucket and did the mapping on just kind of a sample of what the files would look like and generated the, the copy statement. Though Snowflake is still mocked at this point, so we're not actually running the, um, the copy into our table. The other thing that's uh, different in our Docker Compose setup is just since we have the daemon running, we can see a schedule for this. And one thing with the way we do schedules um, is just we have um, multiple schedules for the same pipeline that are just keyed to the different modes. So again, there's one for dev and one for prod but if you look in the schedules for uh, this environment, you only see the schedule for, mo uh, for development. And that, again, is just to kind of keep it a little simple and um, you don't have to make changes by like um, testing something out in one environment. And then if you forget to change it, um, it accidentally getting pushed to prod or something like that. So yeah, so that's pretty much where we are. I think we're still adopting Dagster and just getting it more of a universal skill set on the team, kind of the same way DBT and Snowflake is. But the we've been, I think we've been happy with um, progress so far. It just it's really nice to be able to take advantage of what's already there and not having to start from scratch with every pipeline and feel that you have to be doing a lot of additional work for things that we've done in the past that are similar. Um, if you want to learn more about kind of bridging the Dagster, DBT, Snowflake all together in one place, our uh, infrastructure lead, uh, Emily, uh, gave a talk at DBT Coalesce in, I think that was November or December of last year, but um, it's a 
Snowflake DBT talk primarily, but there's also Dagster's kind of under the hood for that. And that's all I've got.